Why is there a synthesizer built into my boombox? Today, we'll take an in-depth look at the Fisher SC300K and find out what makes this ridiculous retro device so special. Well, I like this okay. a lot. Okay, It's awesome. weird. Yes. And it does seem like, at the time, there were a couple of manufacturers that were doing fun stuff like that. Casio KX101. Yes, I love that thing. And also, uh, I don't know what it's called, but the one that had like the tray that had an actual record you could put in. Those were nuts. Yeah. <laughs> and then, then some of them were sideways, like yeah. the record would be up. Mm -hmm. So those are very, very cool. This one's, I, I can't believe, uh, how much was this? I think I paid about $200 for this. Uh, That's good value. Yeah. I don't know if it's 200, 100. I, I don't honestly remember it. I just remembered buying it and thinking, I don't care how much it costs. I kind of need this thing. Okay. Yeah. eBay. Yeah. And I don't really know why I bought it. It's just like so cool. What we're looking at is the Fisher SC300K, a portable stereo system, AKA boombox, with a synthesizer keyboard integrated right into the top. As far as I can tell, this strange keyboard stereo hybrid system is from the late 80s, possibly 1988. And for all of you kids born after the year 2000, you might not be aware of the plethora of options that were available when it came to boomboxes from the 80s and 90s. Big ones, small ones, colorful ones. But just to be clear, it's not normal for a boombox to have a built-in keyboard. Only a few companies tried this, and given how few are still around today, chances are they didn't sell that well. All right, so first thing we need to talk about is how this keyboard actually docks in the unit. You've got this handle right here, which will allow you to carry your boombox around on your shoulder if you'd like. If you push this all the way down, it hits a button and pops the keyboard out, which is pretty neat. Now you can use the keyboard separately. You can look at the bottom of the keyboard. You can see these little connectors there. You can see where this connects and that provides the power and allows the audio to pass through into the boombox. If you wanna put it back on, you push down and now it's connected again. So the other thing you'll notice, there's no built-in speaker on the actual keyboard. So if you wanna actually get sound out of it, it needs to either be docked or you need to take it out and connect the audio from there into the unit. So if you wanted to have it separate, you could put it right here and then connect it into the boom box right there, which is pretty cool. So we'll talk about all of these keyboard functions in just a bit, but first let's talk about the boom box. Power it on. You can see we've got uh, volume right here. It needs to be cleaned a little bit, um, but we don't have graphic equalizer. We do have a tone control and a balance right here. It has a cassette player. Unfortunately, it's not working. I think the belt needs to be replaced, but it does have a cassette player that I'd like to fix at some point. This is pretty cool. It actually has a microphone input. Hello, 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 hello. <laughs> pretty cool. So if you wanted to use this as a karaoke machine, you could. So it's got FM, AM, and shortwaves, the four band radio. So if you have any shortwave stuff you wanna to listen to, you can do that. All right, let's take a look at the back. It actually has line in and line out. You can also plug in external microphones. And there's these two, what the user manual says are dummy jacks, and I don't know what they do. It doesn't appear to do anything. It's just kind of funny that they're there. Over here is a beat cut switch. It has to do with if you're trying to record AM radio to a cassette tape, it helps eliminate the, the frequencies that are generated uh, when that occurs. So that you can just set this beat cut switch to one of these settings and hopefully that will help you get rid of that noise. It also has detachable speakers, which is pretty neat. It's got these cool little uh, hooks and it just slides down. If you really wanna get modular here, you can have both speakers separated from the unit. So let's flip the unit back around and you can see that this is a very kind of long, skinny unit. It's kind of unusual to have a unit like this. A lot of the boomboxes from the era were kind of taller, a little bit easier to hold on your uh, shoulder. Uh, but this is long mainly because it has a keyboard built into it, which we need to talk about right now. So overall, I think this unit looks pretty nice. I like this, they call it a champagne color with a little black inset. I, I guess they really wanted to go for like a very high quality appearance here. So as you can see, someone put a bunch of stickers on here. I know you had mentioned before I, that you kind of want to... I'm going to do a, 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 a cleanup video where I remove all this. Okay, great. So if this unit looks a little bit familiar to anybody that's into keyboards from the 80s, it's because this is essentially a Casio PT30, which, you know, people kind of dug that keyboard and they just rebranded it as Fisher and found a way to connect it into this boombox, which is ridiculous. Is it a uh, monophonic? It is monophonic. <laughs> That's sad. It is sad. sad. It is sad. But there's some pretty cool sounds here. Let's check it out. That's piano. It sounds just like a piano. Harpsichord. 
Oh, love it, love it. Organ. Violin. Oh, I love that flute. It sounds so, sounds so realistic. Oh, we, we, let's skip past this horn. Kind of boring, but fantasy. Love it. What? It's a fantasy. And then mellow. Kind of like a Rhodes. Yeah, it sounds just like a Rhodes. It's really, really kind of nice. The idea is, you know, you're not you're not like making hit songs with this thing. Although I think you probably could. For back in the day, it was a pretty pretty neat device. So these are the chords. This is pretty cool. Let's check it out. That you want a minor C, press and hold that and hit the C. Minor seventh, major seventh, six, minor six. I think it's pretty that is neat. pretty cool. Yeah, that is pretty cool. I, I actually I really dig the chord the chord sounds here. Let's get some rhythms going here. So you press this rhythm button and then choose your rhythm on the key right here. So all these are different. Oh, I see. They're okay. Waltz, ballad, yeah. swing, enka. Yeah. I'm gonna do some chords. Here we go. So let's let's do uh, F. Maybe A minor. Yeah, you this, know, thing, <laughs> this thing crushes. This thing uh, is amazing. I love it. Well, we didn't even talk about this, this display right yeah, here. Yeah, what is that? It shows what key you're hitting up there, and then it shows you what chord you're playing. Just in case you didn't remember what you pressed, it shows you up there. I, I don't know why that's there, but I, I bet they thought it was pretty cool when they designed this. Stereo music composer. So this is essentially a sort of primitive sequencer. So if we go down to the record function here, now we should be able to just have it record whatever we play. So why don't, why don't you do the honors and just play something. All right. So now if we go down here, we should be able to just play that back. Not bad, <laughs> not bad. And you can play it one at a time. Pretty okay, great. okay, <laughs> color me impressed. I don't know, it's pretty cool. So there are multiple different uh, places you can store these. You can do memory one, two, three, four. Oh wow. Uh, I mean, there's a okay. bunch. So you can store those all in here, but if you actually want to be able to recall them, you can save the data to the cassette. So if- Seriously? Let's, let's assume that this cassette player was actually working. You can save that sequencer data to the cassette so you can recall it at a later time. That's nuts! Uh, some features that I'm, I'm kind of like wondering, did the people actually who use this? Who was this for? I don't know. Who, who <laughs> used this? I don't, I'm not really sure. Who has a stack of data cassettes <laughs> for a Fisher, for a Fisher S? CK30. I know. That they're like, oh, these are jams, man. I know. If anybody out there had one of these back in the day and you still have those cassettes, send them to us because we'd love to load them up and see what you were recording when you were like eight years old. But anyway, yeah, this thing is so cool. I don't know why I bought it, but <laughs> it's pretty fun. We gotta check out ARP 2. Oh, that's right. So, Charles, after seeing this thing, do you kind of want to buy one now? I'll tell you what, here's yeah. my thought. Yeah? It's not usable as a real instrument. Are you sure? These keys are too small. It's not like yeah. really Yeah, playing. yeah, yeah, exactly. I think it's one of the things that if you can find it on eBay broken as a decoration, it's absolutely <laughs> incredible. So it doesn't need to work. But this one works, and it, it's fun to noodle around on. Here's the thing, I have not actually played with it yet, okay. besides what we just did. Okay. So maybe I'll take it home, I'll clean it, I'll take the stickers sure. off. All right. I'll uh, try to fix the uh, cassette deck. That's what I think. Okay. I think you just, uh, that's right. it. You, you don't think this was an amazing purchase? I mean, it was a pretty amazing purchase, don't you think? I, I, <laughs> as a decoration, I think it's extraordinary, okay. but as an actual music instrument, okay. I don't think it's that Okay, good. I'm gonna make an actual song with this thing. I'm gonna prove you wrong. Okay. <laughs> All right. All right, so what do you think about the Fisher SC300K? Would you buy one? Let us know in the comments below. That's it. That's it. All right, see you later. Thanks for watching.